Hello everyone, my name is Ilya and you are watching my YouTube channel where I talk about topics that interest me. Today I will try to answer two topical questions. First of all, how to remove the last exchange server and what to do with our the last exchange server. Is it possible to shut it down? I know a lot of customers who have migrated all their mailboxes to Exchange Online and are asking if they can delete the last exchange server. Two months ago, the answer was no. Right now, in May 2022, the answer is rather no. But you can shut it down. What is the difference between to no and what has changed in two months? Let's find out. Just imagine, almost any company that has decided to migrate to a cloud already has a lot of different on-premise services and servers, and of course, Active Directory domain services. And uh, therefore, such companies need a long period of coexistence to migrate some services, some data to a cloud. And the first step of creating, of I would say, the first step of moving to the cloud is creating a hybrid to synchronize the accounts from Active Directory, I mean Active Directory domain services, to Azure Active Directory. Why we have to synchronize on-premise Active Directory to Azure Active Directory? Microsoft 365, Office 365 do not know anything about on-premise technologies and cannot work directly with Active Directory domain services. How does it work? For example, you create a user account. You create it in your on-premise Active Directory. Why? Because you have a lot of other on-premise services that need your on-premise account and you cannot just disable or just remove your on-premise Active Directory and start using Azure Active Directory. It will not be working this way in reality. Okay, you created an on-premise account, you added all necessary attributes, and after that this information will be replicated to Azure Active Directory. The problem is, when you migrated all your mailboxes from your Exchange on-premise to Exchange Online, all your Exchange Online mailboxes will be linked to your on-premise accounts, on-premise Active Directory user accounts. And of course, Exchange Online will work with Azure Active Directory, but the source, the source of these accounts is Active Directory domain services, is on-premise Active Directory. Azure Active Directory just stores only a copy of these accounts. All attribute changes must be done in on-premise part, in on-premise Active Directory. And only after that this information will be synchronized. As I already said, Exchange Online cannot work with on-premise Active Directory. That's why we have to edit some attributes in your on-premise part using your on-premise tools. What does it mean? Just imagine, Exchange Administrator wants to edit some attributes. It opens on-premise Exchange Control Panel or Exchange Management Shell. Exchange Management Shell connects to the on-premise Exchange Server. Exchange on-premise connects to on-premise Active Directory and an administrator makes some changes. And of course, after that information will be propagated to Azure Active Directory. But we cannot turn off our on-premise Exchange Server. Why? Because our on-premise tools, like Exchange Management Shell, cannot work directly with Active Directory. It needs Exchange as a mediator. It works via on-premise Exchange. As soon as you turn off your on-premise Exchange Server, your Exchange Shell will stop working. Okay, in nutshell, 
after you migrated all mailboxes to Exchange Online, you still need to use on-premise Active Directory. And Exchange Online cannot work directly with on-premise Active Directory. That's why an administrator has to do all changes using on-premise tools, which are not working without on-premise Exchange Server. And it means that we cannot delete the last Exchange Server in your organization. Complete nonsense, but it's true. As long as we use on-premise Active Directory, we have no way out. What has changed in early 2022? I will explain. Microsoft released a new update package for Exchange Server 2016 and 2019. One of the changes is that you do not need Exchange Server to run the console. I mean that you can install a console on a computer and work without connecting to the on-premise Exchange Server and you can manage recipients. My first thought was, oh, it means that you, we can uninstall our last Exchange Server. Unfortunately, no. We can turn off the last Exchange Server. We still need it, but it can be off all the time. Microsoft has described all scenarios when we can shut down the last Exchange Server. First of all, if you have migrated all mailboxes and public folders to Exchange Online. It makes sense, yeah, because we cannot shut down the server if clients are using it. Point number two. Use Active Directory for recipient management and Azure Active Directory Connect for synchronization. It also makes sense. If we don't need Active Directory synchronization, we can do away with Active Directory domain services completely and not think about it. One more point. If you don't use or don't require the on-premise Exchange Admin Center, Exchange Airbag, I mean Exchange Role-Based Access Control. Unfortunately, once you shut down the last Exchange Server, Exchange Role-Based Access Control will no longer function you will not be used this deep delegating system. Only domain admins and users who are assigned permissions using a special script will be able to perform recipient management. Next point. You are comfortable with using Windows PowerShell for recipient management. Uh, normally, we can work with recipients using Exchange Control Panel or Exchange Management Shell. After you turned off the Exchange Server, only PowerShell will be available. And if you want to use Web Console, you still need to keep the last Exchange Server alive. One more thing. If you don't require auditing or logging of recipient management activity, why it will not be working? because it works via arbitration mailboxes and exchange services. Of course, our server is down. Auditing or logging doesn't work, it's normal. If you are satisfied, you can install the last update and shut down the server. The process is perfectly described in Microsoft White Paper. In reality, you practically have to do nothing. All you need is to install the Exchange Console on a new server. As I already said, Role-Based Access Control stops working after you shut down your server. And if you do not want to grant domain admin permissions to everybody who works with Exchange Server, you will need to run a script. This script will create a uh, will create a new group, an Active Directory, and all members of this group will be able to work with recipients. That's all you have to do, nothing more. But if you need details, all the options are described at the link. The first thing that catches your eye when you start the console is that it tries to connect to your Exchange Server. 
but of course without success. Because your server is down. The connection error should not scare you, you just register PS snap in recipient management and it starts working. But <laughs> you will not see the name of the server in the upper left corner, it will be empty. Once connected, you will be able to work only with a limited set of CMDLEDs. Uh, specifically, you will have access to all CMDLEDs for working with recipients. For example, if you want to hide the mailbox from an address book, you can do it with set remote mailbox. Once again, as long as you use on-premise Active Directory domain services and Exchange Online, you will use Exchange Management Shell on-premise. So, why not delete the last Exchange server? Of course, Active Directory scheme will not be cleared. Yeah, I understand it. But uninstalling the server removes critical information out of Active Directory. I'm sure you know that entire configuration is stored in Active Directory under the partition configuration. When you delete the last Exchange server, many things from the configuration will be deleted. This deletion will break everything and after deletion you will not be able to manage recipients via Exchange Management Shell. That's why, please, do not uninstall the last Exchange server. And to summarize the above, you still cannot delete the last Exchange server, but you can turn it off. Thank you for watching me. I hope it was useful. If you have any questions, write them in the comments. Thank you very much and see you soon.